This is Eve Elliott again with the continuing conversations about Valentine's uh, relationships and Valentine's Day. This piece is entitled Laptop Dancing, the unexpected advantages of long distance relationships. So for those of you who have um, not got their Valentine nearby and who are familiar with how horrible the Skyping cameras are on these computers, you may understand why I'm putting makeup on in order to have a little visit with a long distance for later, because you just want to look your best for this person you don't see very often. And you also want to be, um, instead of moping on Valentine's Day, because your honey is not available, what you want to do is appreciate that you can project onto your honey many features and facets of a personality that may not actually be in residence in that person. What I find is that when you are in close proximity with someone for an extended period, there's too much information sometimes, and it is a lot better to have the opportunity to project onto that person imaginary factors which you can then fall in love with. So this is kind of reminding me of the John Keats poem, Ode to a Grecian Urn, which all of us, I think, who went to college were forced to read and analyze, and I'm very grateful I was forced to read and listen to analyses of that particular poem because it's very, very intelligent. It's observation that these lovers that are chasing one another around this urn and they're frozen in time in this very, very old ceramic piece, because they're frozen in time, they will never catch each other. Because they will never catch each other, they will never be exposed to irritating, crazy fetishes and habits each of them has. One of them will not develop refrigerator blindness, for example, and continually say, honey, where's the mayonnaise? And after 127 of those requests to please locate the mayonnaise and interrupting the other person in their life, which could be inflammatory, these Grecian urn characters will never have that opportunity. They can constantly be in a state of yearning. And there is something very lovely about yearning. There is a kind of a foreplay about yearning. There is a kind of a deepening of desire that happens in an unsatisfied dynamic. So this entry into the topic of sexiness and desire is a wonderful way to segue into a little teaser um, about the next piece, which uh, no series about Valentine's Day would be complete without. Naturally, it will be a, a sex-themed piece, and so do stay tuned for that. I want to give my very brilliant friend, Colleen Curtin, credit for not only having suggested the title of this piece, Laptop Dancing, but also the theme, which would never have occurred to me to address long-distance relationships. And so I want to take this opportunity also to thank you for the long-distance relationship we're having and for tuning in and watching these. I really appreciate it. I'm having a wonderful time speaking with you and thinking um, about these matters, which had I not decided to speak with you about, I wouldn't be thinking about. And it's kind of helping me come to some peace about gender differences and the challenges most of us face if, in fact, we want to enter into relationships. Valentine's Day is just a way that Hallmark reminds us of these matters. So I'd like to thank Hallmark, too, which I have formerly been very disdainful about, as you know, if you watched YouTube number three. So thank you again so much for listening, and please stay tuned. Valentine's Day will be the day the sex piece is aired. Thank you.